In this video, we are going to talk about the book and actually this entire section, Test Driven Development by Example, and it's going to be highly influenced by a book by uh, Kent Beck. Now, this book originally published back in 2002. So Kent Beck is, uh, produced this rather iconic book on testing software. This is kind of what helped establish test driven de development as a modern best practice. And even though it was published back in 2002, I'm recording this video in September 2018, 16 years later, Amazon's listing at number 17 in text testing and then number 33 in software design and engineering. So you can see, even though it's such an old book by development standards, it's still uh, very popular. And I've read the book. It's uh, got a lot of great material in it. And like I said, right now in the industry, we kind of just assume that test-driven development is the, the way to go. Very few people dispute that, but we need to step down memory lane a little bit. Back in the early 2000s, people were need, uh, had to be sold on test-driven development. It was something that was evolving. People were starting to accept it. People were pushing back on it, so it was a little more controversial back then. And th this book really helped drive it to the forefront of the software development community. Now, Kent Beck, very well known. He was one of the original 17 people that signed the Agile Manifesto. He originally was known as the founder of S-Unit back in the small talk days. And small talk was like the big OO language prior to Java, uh, small talk. So S-Unit was the precursor to J-Unit. And of course, uh, I've mentioned before that Kent Beck is one of the people that founded J-Unit, which we'll be looking at a lot in this course. Kent also helped found the extreme programming movement. So this, this was big a few years ago. A number of uh, good practices came out of that. And that's very, very intertwined with the agile stuff. And I, I'm not going to focus on all those practices here. I'm really kind of focusing on the testing aspects of that. And I'm talking about Kent because he's really considered a leading advocate for tester and development. Kent is also known as a well speaker, a uh, keynote speaker at a lot of technical conferences. And I, I think he spent about seven years at Facebook. So, And this is a, one of a, a great quote from him. I'm not a great programmer. I'm just a good programmer with great habits. And it really makes you think about that one. And that is a, very important as a, a software developer is to have good habits. So good habits will lead you to quality. I've got a couple other popular quotes here from him. Uh, if I have the same logic in two places, I work with the design to understand how I can only have one copy. Designs without duplication tend to be easy to change. And this is a very important concept. I see I see this violated a lot where you, you repeat code and logic and values in different places. And th this can really get you in trouble fast, especially on a, a larger system where you replicate it. Let's say you do the same thing. One changes, one doesn't, and then you catch it. Which one's right? <laughs> so very, very bad thing. Another one here is don't make more versions of your source code. Rather than add more code bases, fix the underlying design problem that is preventing you from running a single code base. And I have seen this violated multiple times, especially in uh, shops with less experienced people where they'll literally uh, make a version of it. I've seen different libraries and classes where they'll cut and paste into another package and then make a small few small changes. And it literally will lead you down the road to spaghetti code and something that is just a nightmare to maintain. Another thought about is if there are forms of testing like stress and load testing that find defects after development is, in quotes, complete, bring them into the development lifecycle. Run load and stress tests continuously and automatically. And this is a, a, a good point. As your system grows, I see a lot of people try to optimize too early especially junior people that they'll try to get that little bit of performance out of the system way early in the process. There's always time for that. Premature op optimization can cost a lot, a lot of time. Having load and stress tests to load up the system, that will show you where problems are further down the road. So that's why I included that test just from my own experiences where Let's hold off a second. Let's not try to optimize every last cycle out of something that's only going to run once a day. Your time as a developer can be spent in a lot other places that will bring a lot more benefit. Now, in this section of the course, 
think if we've well established that test driven development is widely considered a best practice. Uh, what I want you to see is test driven development in action. What we're going to do is start with a very simple example with test, of course, and then we're going to see how to evolve this example. We're going to basically start with getting it to compile, very simple concept to compile, and we will know that it will not be complete. It's going to be ugly. It is not going to be quality. We are going to then use a TDD approach to evolve it to clean quality code. So this is something that we're going to evolve and change, and we're going to see how that changes work. Now, the reason I've been talking about Kent and the book, we are going to use the money example. And this is used in the first section of Kent's book, Test Driven Development in Action. This is right out of there. I'm not being shame about it. The money example has been used uh, numerous times to help teach and see how test driven development works. The money example actually comes back from Kent's uh, small talk days. And he got the example from Ward Cunningham, who's interestingly enough, a, the founder of the wiki. Ward's actually a, a really interesting guy, but he's a little outside the scope of this course. But just to let you know where that is from, in this example, we are going to start with a really simple example, like I said before, and it's not even going to be able to compile initially, and we will evolve it to where it can compile. We are not going to be following commonly accepted practices, but we are going to evolve our code to uh, quality code, and we're going to use a, a test-driven development approach to it. Now, the approach I'm going to use I'm going to be mirroring the first part of uh, Kent's Test Driven Development by Example book. You do not need the book for this course. I do, however, recommend reading that book. If you have access to Amazon, I think I have a link to the book in the README of the GitHub repository. But like I said, you don't need the book. I'm going to be summarizing each chapter we're going to go through. There's about a dozen chapters that show you this example. Uh, they're pretty simple, but the important part is to show the technique. And like I said, the, the book was written in 2002, and I, I think it was like, this is going from memory, that's like Java 3 or Java 4 days. Uh, so very early stuff, very early version of JUnit, so it's kind of a trip down memory lane. I'm going to be using at least Java 8 and the latest release of JUnit 5, and I'm going to show you how to set that up and run through this course. So I'm going to take what's in that book and update it from 2002 to 2018. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this and see exactly how to apply test-driven development.